Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary Bubala. We are following two major problems in a city in crisis. Fox 45 News will continue to demand answers about the mayor's squeegee collaborative plan in the week ahead after Thursday's big announcement left more questions than answers. Tonight, we're taking a closer look at the change in policy from City Hall. Plus, an investigation is underway right now after police say a dirt bike rider shot at a man who threw something at him in Harbor East last night. Our team coverage starts with Riel Creighton. She is live with a closer look at what happened in Harbor East last night. Riel? And Mary, shots fired. No one was hurt, but police say the incident did involve dirt bike riders. The roar of dirt bikes, a neighborhood nuisance for some, but tonight, new alarm after a potentially deadly encounter Saturday. Here, just before 6 p.m., police said a man threw a bag of leaves at two dirt bike riders, triggering one of them to shoot. The man wasn't hit, and police say the bikers fled westbound on Alizana Street. We are being tortured seven days a week, 365 days a year. Long the chorus, the sounds of summer, that was April. When Fox 45 News heard the overload of frustration peaking in Pigtown, bikers caught popping wheelies on streets. When you couple um, the culture of dirt bikes with the culture of crime in the city. These are the types of things you get. Former Department of Justice legal analyst and community leader Will Hanna has long dealt with the dirt bikes that disrupt traffic in his Park Heights neighborhood. But he says what police report happened Saturday, much like a squeegee confrontation that did leave a man dead, is exactly what raises the temperature in Baltimore. From disgruntled motorists to residents, it's provocation that leads to the worst. Ultimately, what's going to happen is until someone gets hurt, they're not going to change the policy. They didn't come up with a squeegee collaborative to change policy about squeegee kids until someone actually got killed. So, um, so why can't we be a little more proactive than being reactive? Dirt bikes are illegal to own or possess in the city of Baltimore, but police cannot pursue bikers, which often means there's little enforcement. Hannah believes the city needs to reconcile something deeply embedded in Baltimore culture, but also the danger and distraction that it poses. Had we begun to put programs and procedures and policies in place 20 years ago, we wouldn't be here. Now, over the summer, Baltimore City Council did approve legislation meant to curb street racing and stunt driving that includes dirt bike riders. Violators could face a fine of up to $1,000 or even 12 months in jail as a misdemeanor charge. Reporting live in Baltimore tonight, Riel Creighton, Fox 45 News. Riel, thank you. Well, the city used to have a dirt bike task force dedicated to identifying and charging those riding illegal dirt bikes in the city. However, that task force was disbanded in May of 2021, five years after it was created. And since that task force was disbanded, we've seen a number of incidents involving dirt bikes, including another shooting. Last May, police say a group of people on dirt bikes shot two people along Northern Parkway in Northeast Baltimore. A few weeks after that, Fox 45 News obtained video from Fells Point showing dirt bike riders speeding by, dangerously close to people right there on the sidewalk. This summer, a viewer sent Fox 45 a video of a large group of dirt bikers weaving in and out of traffic on the JFX in the city. And we've also seen the dirt bike riders themselves get hurt. This year, a car hit and killed a dirt bike rider over Memorial Day weekend. And last year, a fire truck on its way to a scene hit and killed a dirt bike rider. Fox 45 News has spoken to the riders who tell us some of them don't care what they're doing is illegal. I just, I just ride my dirt bike for fun, for real. But they're illegal. I mean, I do it for fun. It ain't illegal to me. If you see dirt bike riders in your neighborhood and you can safely take pictures and video of it, we want to see it. You can send them into our website, foxbaltimore.com slash chime in or use the Fox 45 News mobile app. Well, the dirt bike law is not the only one that has gone largely unenforced in the city lately. Two laws are on the books targeting soliciting, and they could get squeegee kids out of intersections, but they haven't been enforced. That is until now. It's obvious that City Hall has changed its tune. Mayor Brandon Scott says the city will begin enforcing some laws on the books banning squeegee activity in certain areas. It comes after months of conversations with the Squeegee Collaborative, a group the mayor created after police say a 15-year-old squeegee kid shot and killed Timothy Reynolds in July. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost continues our team coverage. 
Squeegee kids at some of the busiest corners in Baltimore. We'll have to stop darting between cars, looking to squeegee and make some cash starting in January. It comes after Mayor Brandon Scott that the buck would stop here. Unveiled the long awaited recommendations from his squeegee collaborative. The lengthy plan includes banning the activity at these high volume corners. But it's yeah, a think, switch from the rhetoric Scott and the mayor's office has been saying for months man. about not moving squeegee kids from the corners. It's obviously that post election, City Hall wishes to engage in some level of combating or enforcement measures. Jeremy Eldridge, a former city prosecutor, says it's clear the city has made an about face when it comes to their approach to enforcement of these laws. But a central piece to the enforcement and accountability portion of the squeegee plan still remains uncertain. The million dollar question here is what law goes on the citation that's issued to either the adult or the juvenile. After two warnings, the squeegee kids will get a citation. But right now, Police Commissioner Michael Harrison says that's still being developed. What's the citation that they would get? We're now developing protocols, policy, training. Eldred says there are several laws that could be used to issue the citation. Some of the same ones Fox 45 News has been questioning and reporting on for months. Aggressive panhandling, solicitation, or loitering. Now the deputy solicitor, Ebony Thompson, says the law department believes a targeted approach to banning squeegee kids will be constitutional. I've always thought that there was a way to narrowly tailor the issuance of citations and subsequent prosecution. And I think the city has now realized that it can take a pragmatic and lawful approach. But in the enforcement zones, Eldred says it won't just be squeegee kids who will be told to move. In order to make sure enforcement is lawful, he says it's likely panhandlers will be told to leave as well. What's good for the goose has to be good for the gander here. The change in tune is something the mayor himself will not admit. So the laws on the books are now being enforced, but uh, for the last several months they weren't? No, Mackenzie. Uh, we, let's go back again. We, will, we enforce laws each and every day. We have a plan. There's support for the plan across the board. So let's have you guys do some responsible journalism and work alongside that plan to talk about how things will change. Thank you. Either way, the switch comes after incoming state's attorney Ivan Bates made it clear he did not agree with how the Scott administration was handling the squeegee kid issue. Well, I don't necessarily view it as clearing the corners. I view it as enforcing the law. Now, Bates is out with a statement in support, calling the enforcement, quote, a step in the right direction. While the plan is being touted by some, the enforcement zones don't extend to all corners in Baltimore City. What's patently obvious is that the squeegee workers want to make money. Leading to concerns about simply moving squeegee kids from certain intersections to other areas in Baltimore. The city says it will be working with various groups to implement those training programs and provide the services to the squeegee kids, but it's also clear that the framework for actual implementation hasn't been announced yet. In Baltimore, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. And here's a closer look at those six enforcement zones. They include Light and Conway, where Tim Reynolds was shot this summer, President Street by Little Italy and Harbor East, and the 395 MLK Corridor by the stadiums and the University of Maryland Medical Center. In northeast and northwest Baltimore, Sinclair Lane and northern Parkway spots will be off limits to squeegee kids. Well, we have seen a number of incidents happen in those zones over the past few months. In one of them, police say squeegee kids running from officers broke into a woman's home. Fox 45 News spoke with her about the new plan. All we're doing is taking a problem and moving it to a different intersection, period. So that's not fair to the rest of the people who pay taxes in the city, is it? No. Former Republican Baltimore congressional candidate and political commentator Kimberly Klasick shares the same reservations. Moving kids from one zone to another, it's basically what's going to happen. And you're going to see more squeegee washers in areas that you didn't see them before. And I have to wonder, like you said, where is this money coming from? This sends a message to incoming state's attorney Ivan Bates, right? This will happen similar to the times that he's going to be sworn in. And the mayor is basically saying, look, you might have a plan on your own, but I'm going to enforce the plan that I have, which I have to say is opposite of what a state's attorney Ivan Bates said he was going to do. He said one citation, and then he's going to prosecute. 
Well, Fox 45 News has some questions about the plan as well. The plan says squeegee kids will be cited for being in the six enforcement zones, but it's not clear what that citation will be. We know squeegee kids will be paid to go through workforce training, but we still don't know how those payments will work or how much the squeegee kids will be paid. Fox 45 News will continue to ask for answers to those questions in the weeks ahead. Our commitment to you is to hold city leaders accountable for the plan they announced, as well as the other problems facing Baltimore. Well, in the meantime, we want to know what you think. Do you believe Mayor Scott's squeegee plan will be fully implemented and work? So far, 97% of the people who voted say no. Go to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in.